If it started raining at your go-kart track, how would you adjust your driving? Firstly, you will not be able to drive as fast in the wet as you would do in the dry, because rental carts have the same set of slick tyres regardless of the weather conditions, and this will add to the challenge. There's only one way to drive in the wet, and that is to be smooth. Both brake and throttle must be applied with extreme sensitivity. If you're too quick on the accelerator, you'll get wheel spin and go nowhere, and you may even find yourself facing the wrong way. On a wet track, the grip tends to be on sections which you'd never want to drive on during a dry race, and this tends to be to the outside of a corner. So the key is to follow the wet line when cornering. This is where you'd enter the corner from the outside edge, staying at the outside whilst you get your braking done and turning done, making sure you're feathering the throttle, benefiting from the extra traction and grip as you exit the corner. Generally, you want to turn in earlier than you're used to, and you'll probably wonder if your wheels are still connected because the cart will continue in a straight line. But don't panic, this is normal in the wet, and you've just got to wait until the speed is low enough for the front tires to bite, at which point it will turn sharply. And this is why your braking technique is so important in the wet. If you brake hard in the wet, you're likely to lose the rear end and go off spinning into the grass. I found that pumping the brake is the quickest and easiest way to slow your go-kart down for a corner without risking a spin out. Pumping the brake acts as human ABS because it enables you to recover the cart quickly after that initial understeer you get each time you turn in for a corner. Another important tip to note is when you steer into a corner, lean your body to the outside to take the load off the inside rear tire. Because there's no differential, leaning to the outside encourages the cart to turn easier. How much you lean and how violently you do this depends on how tight the corner is. Generally, the tighter the turn, the more movement is needed. You can also try and use curbs for some corners because they'll hook your tire, providing you with more grip, hence allowing you to gain that extra lap time. Now, when it comes to overtaking in the wet, patience is a virtue. The easiest way to pass a driver is to wait for them to make a mistake, and this tends to happen when they go off the line. So we're trying to pass the driver in front and notice how he goes to the inside line, off the wet line, whereas we stay to the outside. We're going to anticipate him to overshoot the corner on exit, whereas we're now gonna to switch to the left-hand side of the track, back to the outside in preparation for this hairpin turn. And it's this corner where I'm ready to do a switch back because I anticipate the driver to overshoot the corner again because he's on the slippery part of the track. And as he overshoots the corner, he leaves that gap open for me and I breeze past him. Driving in the wet will initially feel difficult and very slow. The thing to remember is that almost everyone will be thinking the same. It's actually possible to get a very satisfying flow and rhythm, gently balancing the throttle out of the corners and linking one turn to the next, but you should always remain on high alert for any signs that the cart is about to do something unexpected. It takes experience and the only way to obtain it is to get out on a wet track whenever possible. Let me know in the comments what techniques you use in wet weather racing. And if you did enjoy today's video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe.